everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be uh, talking about Joseki once again. Um, so let's just quickly add a couple moves on board. Um, so we're still working on our um, low approach. So this is the most popular uh, move. Um, and uh, I'd say it actually is a little bit harder to manage than the high approach. Well, why is that? Last time we presented uh, two of my recommended defense. One's uh, to play the small knight, if you remember. The other one is obviously a very boring uh, kick and jump. Uh, boring, but it's very good. Well, the complication does not come from black. It really depends on what white plays next. And then, uh, a few of my viewers have also mentioned, hey, uh, Genchu, can you actually just cover some of the pincer variations? Could you go into details um, so we can learn them as well? Well, the answer is that not really, because um, not because I don't want to show you guys some of the great variations that pincers can give you. Rather, my level is not there. I'm not a professional player. It is very, very difficult for me to cover pincers uh, in great details. So let me just show you what I mean, right? So let's say, for example, white goes ahead and plays a two space high pincer. The correct variation is for black to uh, play this pressing move, forcing white to go into a fight. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly play out one of the possible variations. Uh, that is recommended by AI. So when black hops here, um, here white uh, pretty much has a, a few choices. There, there are already several branches that each leads to very complicated variations. But I can show you what AlphaGo has once recommended. Uh, that is for you to play this one. Already looks very, very tricky. Black follows up by exchanging two moves in the corner uh, and then he goes ahead and plays out this one, forcing white to block, and then Hane, and then white starts to uh, immediately start this co up. And this is just complete chaos, guys. And this is one of the variations, right? Like one of the many, many, many variations. Uh, already we can see the complication. If we uh, keep going a little bit, uh, you know, at this point, what is even going on? There's a co going on. White's corner is not alive. Black's group is not settled. Uh, and then there's just so many possibilities moving on here. This is fireworks all over the board. Um, so, so you can tell that my level is definitely not good enough to cover these. And I definitely do not want to say whatever, right? Things that are not based on any analysis, not based on any sort of... Um, uh, professional advice. I don't want to say any of those. I, I have to make sure that my channel stays very vigorous uh, or as, vigor as vigorous as it possibly can, um, you know, for my viewers. So that's why I don't cover uh, the pincers, uh, you know, like these complex variations is very, very difficult to cover. Uh, let me just show you another example, right? We talk about two space high extension. Well, what about two space low extension? Is there a way we can just memorize a few branches and then we'll be settled? Well, the answer is no, because when you pincer at the low two space, it leads to a different variation. Uh, so this could be what happens. And it's just a complete different story from the high pincers. Uh, so at this point, black hops down. We're gonna push here. There's several choices. Black can hop into the corner. Black can connect over here and then plays out uh, this one. And then that's already a Liberty fight inside. Uh, very, very complicated Liberty fight already. And then um, uh, it's just a very difficult uh, thing to actually even memorize. I don't, uh, I don't even know what's gonna happen in the corner anymore. So, um, and uh, and even relying on AI analysis sometimes is not the best because, uh, or you, you pretty much have to make AI run many, many times to make sure the reading is accurate because this is already just Liberty fights. This is already either you die or 
I die, right? Very, very early in the games, right? Like 10 moves into the game, it's a liberty fight. That's why this is very exciting. But in the meantime, it's very hard to master. Uh, you can forge your own secret weapons. Uh, and um, uh, definitely not something that I can uh, ensure the quality or the vigorosity um, of the content. So today we'll talk about a slightly, um, I'd say slightly, you know, less favorable, but still very, very good uh, variation. Uh, that I recommend to my viewers. Uh, that is for, uh, so sorry, before that, I just wanna mention if I placed this one, uh, this is something I have covered in my trick video. You can go back and check it out, uh, but I just wanna quickly illustrate how we deal with this. So we hop out, white makes a small knight, and then black think very flexibly and just tanukis and play somewhere else. If white pushes here, black is able to, um, make use of the shape and then actually come out. White's best move is to actually hop here, uh, in which case you can think about Tanuki again. When white encloses you, you can then start to make yourself alive in a corner uh, by attaching at C, uh, C17, or you can also uh, try out these kind of variations. As long as you live, uh, white's investment uh, is quite a lot, right? Letting, letting you getting two moves outside is quite a lot. So this is covered in one of my trick videos. Um, so obviously the trick being that if you go for this, uh, white's D13 stone is actually going to be very, very strong. Uh, get, uh, you know, helping this fight out. So uh, just make sure if it's a high space or one space, high pincer, uh, make sure you don't actually press like this. But the other ones you can actually press, uh, obviously based on the assumption that, you know, you actually know the some of the variations moving forward. Or if you just want to try things out, go ahead. Um, go into a, you know, fierce fight uh, if you like it, if you feel like it. Today I want to present to you guys some of the, um, you know, interesting variations uh, that is a lot simpler. Uh, a lot easier to manage that you can use safely in a tournament uh, or a more serious game where you don't want to when you don't want to try out dangerous things uh, and the move is for you to actually jump at f uh, 15. Uh, this is a very nice relaxing move we all know what it does it gets your stone out very very fast and it's putting pressure on d17 stone Against this uh, move, White's best defense is to actually kick, uh, making sure he grabs the corner, and then Black follows up with a very nice uh, shape move at D14. So, so now, for example, if White jumps here, obviously White does not want to allow Black to hop here. This not only pressures the corner, but also strengthens Black's sight. So this is a huge move to play. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and exchange these two moves. Uh, and then you can feel free to Tanuki uh, from here. The reason you can Tanuki is because your group has a very vivid shape and it's very hard to attack uh, this group actually uh, because this stone is already out. Uh, and then your shape looks, um, looks like it has a lot of eye space uh, and it's very flexible. So that's one way you can uh, deal with the pincer. This is a very good way to deal with the pincer, actually. Um, so if you do want to play locally, you can also think about attach at, at G17. If white plays this one, we can uh, block over here. Uh, white cannot really counterattack because we can just pierce through the corner. Um, so what white needs to do is to actually just um, connect here. And then we can extend, um, and then that's the end of the sort of the variation. This is the end of the Joseki. At the end of this, Black is able to get out very safely, uh, as well as creating influence towards the center. Uh, white likely needs to connect the stone back, because if you don't connect the stone back, uh, when Black counterattacks, your D12 stone is actually um, in a tough spot. So. It's good to give some reinforcement to your stone as white. So this is an equal position moving on for both sides. And I think as black, you should definitely feel very comfortable because 
Um, because in terms of territory, sure, whites came quite a, quite a bit in the corner, but it was white's corner to start with. We can gain the territorial balance back by immediately choosing uh, a very territorial Joseki, like the 3-3 Joseki. And uh, that's just a very equal game moving on. Then later on, we can develop the center uh, with the group over here. So very simple, peaceful um, game moving on. Uh, the other possibility is an old variation for white to hop directly um, at f17. Um, so against this move, we can potentially just attach into the corner, uh, make a tiger's mouth, and when white connects, we can just uh, we can just descend here. Uh, doesn't matter. So so white can also think about making a tiger's mouth. Uh, that's also possible. And then we can either tanuki or we can. Uh, well, well, I guess tanuki is is a very interesting choice at this point, uh, because mostly because the white's position is quite low. Um, so we can think about Tanukin. Once again, your group is going to be very flexible uh, and uh, it is very hard to actually attack uh, you here. Or even better, you can just Tanuki right now. Uh, and then your group over here is very hard to catch. Uh, for example, if white attach, uh, attaches the E15, that's a very nice move to actually hit your group. Uh, but we can use our flexibility mindset and actually play this one. Uh, when white honeys, we can make a tiger's mouth. Um, so here, white is already in a tough spot. If you play out this one, I can just push uh, at e16. So this is a, a very nice move that completely destroys you know, the attack over here. When you play this one, I can Atari. And when you connect, I can completely capture the E15 stone. So as we can tell, black has a very nice shape, squeezing white's corner uh, onto the second line. So this is a very nice position for black to be in, especially considering that black already gained a super big move outside. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think uh, that should be it, right? I don't see any other uh, worrying, uh, worrisome moves, uh, really, uh, at this point, uh, the two main variations really for white to kick, sorry, you don't extend, uh, I recommend you to actually play this one, uh, and, uh, the variation is very simple, uh, we attach a G17, that's a very big move, uh, when this happens, we can just call this a day, so that's, uh, the first variation variation you kind of need to remember, and the second one is when white hops here, uh, we can attach into the corner. But obviously, I recommend you to to nuki uh, because it's very difficult to catch these two guys. If white goes for this one, we can attach in the corner, uh, and this is very hard to deal with. So so when white plays out this one. Uh, we can just play out like this, right? Making use of the weakness in the corner, connecting ourselves back and completely uh, making this E15 stone looks very, very bad, right? Because this is a useless stone right now. So after a few exchanges, black can be very happy uh, by capturing the E15 stone completely. Uh, this group is very, very strong now. And that's actually a leading game for black. So white should probably not play uh, play an attach here. Uh, rather, a better move is probably for white just kick, and we go back to more or less the same uh, variation uh, moving on from here. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I hope you guys actually feel more comfortable uh, playing against a pincer, because I know it is very difficult when your opponent pincers like this uh, there's no immediate settle in the corner. Uh, rather, you have to rely on uh, this kind of, <coughs> sorry, this kind of uh, slippery moves um, and uh, actually turns out to be not so hard to manage, right? So hope you guys uh, like this and actually can make use of this in your games. So for now, thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.